Okay, so the last kit in this series is my first aid kit. Uh, I think this is one area where newer canoeists, newer uh, outdoor travelers tend to add a lot of additional weight unnecessarily. Uh, if you don't have a lot of proper training and you're bringing a lot of extra gear with you um, in terms of first aid supplies, um, you're adding a lot of bulk and weight. And so you'll find that after a while that you're really not using a whole lot of stuff and there's some things, but there are some things that I would recommend having in case you do run into some trouble. There are some things that it's very hard to, um, to get by without. Now that being said, most of your gear in a survival or a emergency situation becomes medical gear. So a headlamp becomes the light that you use to check a pupil dilation. Uh, your pack frame, your, if you're using an internal frame pack, becomes a cervical collar. Um, everything has a function. For a, a lot of things have a function for medical use. Um, your pot set can become a bedpan. Um, your water bottles become a rewarming um, kit. So <clears throat> there's a lot of things, a lot of multiple multiple uh, functions out of the gear that you already have. There's no need to carry a much larger kit. That being said, on a longer trip with a lot of people, especially kids, um, having some supplies is certainly helpful. So my kit is, this is pretty stripped down, pretty bare bones. Um, I'll go through the contents of what I have. Um, you don't necessarily need to mimic everything that I have here. You might find that you need some specific things for your needs. Um, I'm just going to go through the stuff that I I use frequently, and I've really kind of stripped down my kit um, to, to, to reflect that. So first and foremost here, right at the top, um, I've got a um, trauma bandage. This is what's called an Israeli bandage. It's a great multiple purpose uh, kit item. It's an, actually, it's a newer item to, to my wilderness kit. Uh, but you can use this for, um, a, it's a compression bandage. So it's good for a large wound um, in, in areas, especially in areas where maybe it's hard to, uh, hard to bandage, like armpits, crotch, neck, things like that. Um, it's good for an, a, even an abdominal issue or a large gash like on the leg, but you can also, because it's compression, you can use it to help slow down um, the, the venom from a snake bite. Um, you can use it for a musculoskeletal issue if you need an extra ba ace bandage. Um, you could use it for head injuries. Um, there's, so there's a, you could use, even use it as a sling if you needed to, uh, if you need an extra uh, sling. But So lots of uses. So that's right up at top. Of course, I've got a bunch of gloves. I've got a first aid manual. Uh, two cravats. This is a minimum. Um, these are super handy for so many things. Uh, anything that you'd use a bandana for, you could use a cravat for. But the cravat is bigger, so you can use it for slinging, for head injuries, uh, many things. So I have minimum two. But, you know, again, I can use this as another makeshift uh, cravat. The other thing I will note is... Um, and I didn't do this, is you want to take this actually out of the wrapper. And we'll do that now. So you have an inner wrapper and an outer wrapper. So if you have the, it's already in a case, so I don't need to protect it anymore. And I want to keep it clean because this is a bandage. So I'll keep it in this inner wrapper. Um, but it's ready to go in case there is a problem. The other thing I'll mention about the Israeli bandage, and a lot of times I see nowadays more and more people in their wilderness kits are packing tourniquets. Do it if you felt comfortable with, um, but in a very severe bleed, uh, you know, this compression bandage isn't going to slow down um, a cut like that. Um, however, I will say for most severe bleeds, this will work. And this in conjunction with a belt or, or something else. I don't know if I've ever come across a situation where I'd ever need a tourniquet in the wilderness uh, because of the nature of what you're doing. Um, certainly if you're around some woods tools, maybe there's a possibility or whatever, but um, I don't know if there's any need for a tourniquet. That's just myself. I think for most injuries, um, this, is, this suffices. Okay. Um, as far as more bandaging material, I, I have kind of a selection of band-aids, and then I like 4x4 four four gauze uh, because it's a, good, it's a good size. I can always cut it down to make it smaller, uh, to make many smaller bandages. 
Um, I just find it to be much more useful. So I just have gauze and band-aids. Um, and then you can use it as an eye patch. You can use them all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, musculoskeletal issues are always an issue on the trail. So I always have tape. Uh, so you can tape up an angle. And I always have at least one large elastic bandage. Since I'm canoeing, this one, this kit's based off of canoeing, maybe one sprained ankle on a portage is possible. So I'm not going to bring an extra bandage. But if you are, you know, you might, might find a need for a larger bandage. The other thing, too, is I can always fold this down if I don't need it as big. So, and then I can use it for a bandage care, for a wound care as well. So um, it, it works for a lot of different stuff. A little thing of Vaseline um, is great for, blist, for blister prevention, for lips. Um, lubing, anything that you might, might need. So ha happy to, or just a small amount is all is needed, I think. Uh, bandage, uh, tape, just a little extra of that. Uh, a clothing, uh, clothing pins, I've got several of these. Um, these primary use for these is for the bandage, for making a, um, making a, uh, a sling. Um, in a really extreme emergency, you can use this to pin back a tongue if you needed to hold, keep an airway open. Um, but again, I wouldn't recommend that for anybody um, unless you're trained. Um, and we can talk more specifically about that technique. Uh, and then medic, uh, for wound care, I also have a syringe um, that you can use to flush an eye or a wound. Um, although... <clears throat> Not necessary. You can always empty your baggage, your little baggie, cut a little hole at the corner here, fill it with water, and then you can use that to irrigate just the same. So if you want to save a little bit of weight. Um, additionally, too, in the larger kit, I might carry saran wrap for burns. We're obviously going to be around fire. That's always a possibility. Uh, for smaller minor burns, again, I can just cut out the plastic in the bag and cover a wound with the plastic. Um, and then if there was a really severe, like a, s a sucking chest wound, the duct tape or athletic duct tape and a piece of plastic would be fine for a sucking chest wound. So, uh, you know, you can make do with what you've got when you have to. Um, a vial of iodine, you can use this to treat water. Uh, you can use this, of course, to clean wounds, uh, to put this on, um, uh, dilute the solution to flush your wounds out. So nice to have liquid iodine, I think. Uh, chapstick. Um, and then I have some uh, Benadryl, uh, or I'm sorry, some um, calamine lotion. Um, and then as far as pills go, um, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and Benadryl are the three things that I recommend. Um, you could go with GI stuff. You could go with anything specific to you. Um, but if you have these three things, you know, acetaminophen, you can do, and uh, you can treat... You can use it as a sleeping aid. You can use it for anti-anxiety. You can use this for pain. You can use it for all sorts of, for inflammation. So you, you can kind of cover your bases with these three things. Um, and we can go more specific in that if we want, but I think you can kind of cover a lot of different, uh, c cover a lot of ground without, um, with just three basic pieces of medication. Hydrocortisone cream, again, for, um, you know, if you're in and around places where there's bugs and poisonous plants and things like that, then, or um, toxic plants. Triple antibiotic ointment, of course. Pencil, very handy to have for writing your soap notes. Um, a finger splint, probably you can get away with a stick or something else, but um, it's light and they're handy. Um, I find it to be, your digits tend to be um, the ones that you're going to cut for, for, you know, most readily, your fingers, and in that case, if you bandage a finger and splint it, it'll heal a lot better and faster if you're not moving it around a lot. So, a little pin for poking blisters, um, you know, clothes pin will work fine. Um, little hemostat, certainly really great for wound care uh, and many other things. Little magnifying glass and tweezers is a little combo, uh, nice to pull out um, thorns and stuff. Um, as far as assessment items, then I've got, uh, you know, a um, stethoscope, uh, which is hard to replace in the field if you don't have. So I, I think that's worth the wait. And then um, a thermometer so you can take someone's temperature. Again, if you're doing care over the course of hours, because you're in, you're in a wilderness context, you have to be thinking about 
how do you how do you measure people's vitals over the course of hours when you're doing first aid in town uh, you know an ambulance is five maybe ten minutes away um, but if you can't get to an ambulance you have to kind of gather information about the patient over the course of hours if not days so having these kind of instruments in that scenario makes a big difference and even if you don't really know what you're doing if you're recording all that information when more advanced help can come then they have a better picture of what's going on so uh, and then lastly I have a pair of trauma shears um, and and then um, the final thing that I'll pack in here, which I, I thought I had, uh, I apologize, didn't have it, is a SAM splint. Um, and a SAM splints are absolutely fantastic pieces of gear. You can use it to splint up an arm. Uh, you can use it as a cervical collar, um, many functions. It's harder to replicate a splint in the field that's comfortable as a SAM splint. Certainly you can use sticks and other things too if you needed to, but it's much more comfortable to have a, a SAM splint. Uh, and again, you could, you could splint an arm that's got a big cush, cut as well. It doesn't have to be a broken bone or a sprained wrist or whatever. Um, and so <clears throat> that is my Wilderness First Aid Kit. Please leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or have any suggestions of things that you found to be helpful on the trail as well. I'm always happy to learn more and to listen to comments and suggestions. Um, but again, this is pretty general, so I might add specific items, more bandages for more people, for example, more medications, whatever it might need, or something very specific to the area or the activity that I'm doing. But this is kind of the the basis of my survival or my first aid kit. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for watching this series, and more videos will be on the way.